Oh, so I seen some shit the other day, right? And it said, um, they was talking about, you know, the universal design of life and shit. You feel me? You feel me? Ma'am, ma'am. And, um, they was talking about the universal design of life, but the nigga was saying some real shit about, like, how all of this shit is bullshit, right? And, like, it's, 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 a uh, it's stuck in place type of shit, you know what I mean? But the nigga, like, long and short, the, the point he was making to the other person, he ended up saying, like, yo, close your eyes and try to imagine a color that you've never seen before. You can't do that shit. Like, you really can't. Like, and I tried. I'm trying to think, like, but why is that? If anybody, when you see this later, if you got the answer, like, please let me know, because I don't know why you can't think of a color that you've never seen before. That it speaks to the, the the limiting factor of life. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit is unlimited, but it's limited too. Like I don't know. That's that shit where I be saying like, eh, hey, like tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Ain't promised, but it's likely and shit. It's like a lot of shit be existing as truth at once. So I'm like, well, let me just go live, chop it with him. Plus, I wanted to start doing burning builds twice a week. I'm trying to get more and more convenient, more and more, I mean, more and more consistent with this sort of thing. This shit be hard, man. Like, I think if you're an entrepreneur, not even an entrepreneur, if you're just a creative, yo, like, that shit is, you got to really, like, you got to hold your nuts on that shit, man. Because if you let it, the world will give you every reason to not pursue your creativity or pursue your entrepreneurship and make you feel better about it. Like, you got to hold your nuts. You got to hold your nuts on this shit, man. You got to just keep doing that shit. Just keep doing that shit. That's how I feel. Uh, y'all want to smoke some weed? Good morning. This is for you. How you like that? God bless the air that we share, you know what I'm saying? There's only one air. Breathe deep and you think about me, ain't I right there anyway? Really, your thoughts is all there is. So this shit is just like the Monopoly board for you to play the game on. Like, that's amazing. I 
ain't got six figures. Shit, they, every cent I get, I be pouring right back into everything y'all see. I got about six, seven ventures, and I'm trying to launch an eighth. So my money's like always tied up, and that's my friend, so he trying to put me on the bread. You know what I mean? Help, help my shit get in. It's like, that's what friends do. But even if, like, I've had friends before that's like, yo, if you ain't on what they think you should be on, they're not fucking with you. I'm saying which makes sense like don't you shouldn't be around nobody that you know what I mean like I always try to look at things from both sides that's why I say everything ain't for everybody you know what I mean and it's on you to know what's for you and to figure that shit out can't nobody do it for you you'll always feel resentful if they figure it out for you so you gotta like you know what I'm saying realize and find and blaze your own trail sometimes some of us we born to follow a path that's already laid for us you know what I'm saying? Some of us, we trailblazers. Some of us, shit, man, some of these motherfuckers is cattle. You know what I'm saying? Some motherfuckers is just stock, livestock. They just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? They just there. They just, whatever position they play in their community only requires for them to stand around and graze. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah. We ain't into that. We gonna do a little more. But I was speaking to the point of I like that friend can be friends even though we in different brackets like he don't look down on me I don't feel shitted on no time when I talk to the nigga you know what I'm saying like I, I'm always motivated when I speak to him saying it was good man I'm always motivated when I speak to the nigga I don't know I, I want more of those kind of friends I want more of the friends that like pour positive energy and juice into me and I ain't saying niggas gotta be on that old hotel, you know, we doing sound bowls and all that, cause you know, I don't think my dog do none of that shit. But he just a real nigga. We known each other about 10 plus years, and niggas just stay solid, man. I think it's important for you to like, like I said, man, my friends get to the bag and I'm happy for them niggas. I'm learning to love on me better, and niggas is respecting that. And I like that. I think a lot of times, when you're trying to grow as a person, it's largely the people around you keeping you locked into who you are not. That's not me. That's Neil Donald Walsh, by the way. Conversations with God. Great three of the best books I ever read. Um, but fucking, it's important to have those friends, man. Where you feel at home in their heart and they feel at home in yours. Y'all on the constant path of growth because I'm on a constant path of growth, so it's like any of my like I, I lost a lot of friends, like not even in entrepreneurship, I lost a lot of friends just in life. So I be trying to like cultivate the best quality relationships with people that I can. A lot of times, you know, that require like a humility in self, but a knowledge of self. You can't be humble and like, like if your humility is coming out of your insecurity type shit, nigga, you ain't humble, you just scared. You lack the power to be a force in a room anyway. You know what I'm saying? So you just like, yeah, you're gonna be a bitch in a room type shit. Nah, when you know you got the power to take over a room, when you know you got the power to win an argument, when you know you got the power to just like, lead the charge of energy that exists in the room, and you choose to be humble then, choose to elevate, you know what I'm saying, and or illuminate light and shine on somebody else, I think that's real, I think that's what gangster is, I think that's gangster, I think that's dope, and I like to do that, I almost enjoy that shit more than I enjoy my own success, I enjoy seeing people have it, because the more people that have it, the better the world is, you know what I'm saying, so I love seeing other people's success, I genuinely love it, I think that that's something as black people, we need to do got to practice on working on it and it took me a long time because when I was a kid nigga every every person's success I always felt like why me you know what I'm saying like, growing up in poverty mindsets nigga and dominant hierarchies and shit you feel like you're at the bottom of the totem pole every day you see something good happen to somebody else you're like damn I wish that shit happened to me like if you see some shit good happen to somebody you be like damn why not me you's a fucking hater yo he's a fucking hater and I know because I used to be a hater too Poverty make a hater out of a man, dawg. You be broke as hell, mad as shit. At yourself, at life, at your circumstances, at everything. That ain't what's real. That ain't what's real at all, man. You get into them poverty mindsets, nigga. You find yourself in some dark places. You know what's real, what's dope, and what's easy to do? It's not easy, because it takes practice. It's simple. Simple and easy ain't the same thing, but I like simple. I learn to celebrate others, man. Genuinely. Once I learned how to do 
that, life became like easier in the sense of like me surviving it. Because I always got friends and friends help you. Friends ain't gonna leave you fucked up. Friends gonna tell you when yo, you tripping. Friends gonna tell you when you falling off. Like, damn nigga, what's going on with you? Go get a haircut. Like, shout out one of my shout out two of my best friends, yo. Like these niggas my brothers, like Mike, Mike, and Richard. I remember when I had braids, them was the two niggas that would always be like, brother, you gotta get your hair done, boy. Like, you gotta go get a lineup, boy. Like, them was my friends that cared about my appearance because them was two of my friends that realized in their own life that, like, you feel how you look. And if you look good, you feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they was trying to teach that to me. I was coming from a poverty mindset. I was coming from no name brand shoes and shit, you know what I'm saying? So to me, it was just like, man, I be dinner on some like clothes, just clothes shit back then. And I understood the importance of like, feeling a certain way, looking a certain way, taking a certain care of yourself, you know what I mean? I still got dreads, cause I'm a rough, you know what I'm saying? I'm a rough around the edges. I'm a nature boy anyway, you know what I'm saying? But definitely I understand when, you know what I mean? I, I, I see the importance of like celebrating others. And those is two people that I know that like, if they see you shining, they gonna celebrate you. Like, go go to Mike Mike crib, yo. <laughs> go to Mike Mike crib with some fly shit on. Watch that nigga be like, okay, I see you, boy. Oh, what's those right there? Like, he gonna chop it with you. Like, I love people that know how to be happy for other people. And in my life experience, and me, I, me being a life, you know what I'm saying, like 19 keys say a high observation, a high observer, you know what I'm saying, a high level observer and shit. People who know how to happily celebrate other people, like even without the need for inclusion, them be the luckiest people. I feel like them be the luckiest. They like they always have good luck. Like they like, I don't know. It's really that's that's real. I'm thinking about it. All the people I know that's like, yeah, you're dope. Even they have hard times. Some of them have some hard times. You know what I'm saying? It's real hard times. But like every single person I know that celebrates other people, they always make it through. And they always end up better than they was in a better position. I think it's about just working on that like gratitude for life. You know what I'm saying? Like gratitude for life, probably what I'm gonna call this one. Like, you gotta have gratitude for life. You're just happy to be here, man. I spent so much time being forced on the outside of things as a, as a youngin. Like, that's what, that's what being a gypsy kid is. You move it, you're always the new kid. You're always the one on the outside of the circle. I spent so much time in that shit. ass, woe is me, victimized ass, non-trusting ass, like, suspicious ass memes, like, nigga, that shit become you if you're feeding yourself that bullshit, you got to actively, like, reject that shit in your mind, you can't even let that shit, you, when you scrolling and you see some bullshit, you can't even just keep scrolling, you got to actively be like, yo, that's some bullshit, and then, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah, that's some bullshit, and then move on. Like, yo, you know what? I used to, f I, well, I still do. I follow mad sex workers on Twitter, right? Because I like to see porn in my timeline. It's fire. I realize I follow now. I follow all sex, mad sex workers. But I turn all them bitches' retweets off. They be retweeting some bullshit. I'm like, yo, I don't want to see that. Like, and, I, and then I realized when I turned all the sex workers' retweets off, I don't even really see the bitches in my timeline like that no more. It's like, bitch, I like to see your content. I don't want to see you promoting somebody else's content. They, they, you know what? That's actually a good thing. I just prefer to turn my retweets off. But it's dope how the sex workers stick together and promote each other. Now that I think about it, I can't even hate on that. It says, 
we live in an era where like this shit that became so normal and popularized that niggas is sex workers too. So it's like shit, these bitches be sharing nigga shit. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to see that shit in my timeline. I open this shit around my grandmother. Come on, y'all. Get it together, baby. I ain't trying to see that shit. You wildin'. You think I wanna see that content? You bugging. I need some more. I need some more fire shit. Slow mo twerk videos. Let me see all the waves. I like that. I worship women. I don't cherish pussy. It's the difference. You know what I'm saying? God is in everything. You know what I'm saying? That the base element of, 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 of existence. We built that shit with like numbers. You feel me? It's a geometry. The geometry of a woman is very alluring. It is like, look, to me, it is like looking at God. I don't really see no difference. I'd rather look at a, I'd rather look at a, a woman than look at white Jesus. Like, and recognize that as my God. I can identify with that better. Whereas like I'm kinda educated, so not kinda. I'm, I'm I don't know shit. But I do know the little bit that I do know or think that I do know. So like I'm good on the on facades and shit. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather make you know life and love my religion. <laughs> and I ain't too concerned with salvation. I got caught. 
cars, planes, and shit like that. This, how else could you explain being jet lagged? You ain't do shit. You got on the plane and you sat there for four hours, and then you got off the plane, but you was tired. Why? I'm in a car. I'm not doing anything. I'm on cruise control. I'm not even fucking. I'm, it don't even take no brain wavelength to really function this shit. So is it because it's like a? It becomes like an unconscious thing, maybe that you get tired. Because when you're in a plane, you're not driving a plane. It gotta be because you're moving through time, nigga. And you did it fast. So it was four hours to you, but you was moving so fast through so much space that that shit really, to, to get from, if you flying from, say, I don't know, fucking uh, 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 Boston to Denver and it take you five hours on some traditional natural shit, like that shit probably would've took your ass like 90 days to walk that. You feel me? Like I a better example, Harriet Tubman and them. They used it used to take them uh uh uh, uh what she made like 19 trips from the south to the top and it took them like what like 70 days each time type shit. So you walk up from say like Southern America to like Canada or like you know north of the Mason Dixon, whatever the fucking case it is. These motherfuckers used to be walking for two months. Some shit that you could jump in a car now and do in a couple of hours. It, that, that to me, I don't know. If, if anybody know the answer to that, when you see this, please drop it in the comments. Um, Cause I feel like it gotta be because you're going through space. And you know you're going through space though. Cause air just water anyway. All this shit is water. We live in a fishbowl. Y'all know that y'all like three different forms of air turn the water turn the uh, evaporation turn the ice whatever whatever you don't believe air is water put your hand out the window while you're going real fast nigga you're gonna feel the force so it's like you know it's there we just can't like you know what i'm saying we can't perceive it to visually like see the shit so it's like i'm running through mad water i'm running through force that's expending energy even if it ain't me that's force hitting my body. Even if I'm in protected by a car or the or the hull of a plane, my body's still moving through force. Like that shit, it, it put your hand under water, nigga, and do this shit like this. It's not a lot of action, but that you see that shit is exercise in and of itself. So that gotta be what's going on. Just fucking force. Maybe our soul is like forces. You know what I'm saying? That's why we can't see it. It's there. Sometimes I feel like I can feel it or sense it. It's like the air. You know when it get thick, it get you know the air get thin, get smoggy, get stinky. It get characteristics to it, and, and so to let you know that it's real, and you can sense it and feel it. soul get like that you get depressed you get sad you get your shit get to feeling heavy heavy hearted what's on your mind heavy is the head that wear the crown type shit i'm doing the same speed but i feel like i was going faster in the other lane why is that because the cars in this lane is going faster nigga and that's contextual all right everything ain't motherfucking rocket science <laughs> I don't see it, I don't see it. This force, we moving through this force now. Me being a gypsy, being a kid moving through the force my whole life. Now we know that most people are born, live and die within like a 30 mile radius. So they ain't exposed to nothing but the forces that are native to them and shit, you feel me? Now if, I'm, if I go to 12 different schools, if I live in projects, you know what I'm saying? If I live in if I live in the lowest part of survival in four different regions, I'm walking barefoot in Florida, Virginia, and you know, other places and shit like that. I'm absorbing this force. I'm breathing this force. How is that affecting me? Epigenetics, you know what I'm saying? Right now it's teaching that um, your environment got more effect on your DNA than your actual, uh, what you would call it, yeah, the shit you inherit, your inherited DNA, you know what I'm saying, so that means that, nah, nigga, 
you ain't a diabetic because Big Mama was a fucking diabetic. You a diabetic because you eat the same shit Big Mama ate, the same poor ass foods, the same slave foods, and you got the same slave ass thinking Big Mama had. Now most of our conditions is brought on by our thinking. And our thinking is mostly brought on, not most, our thinking is all brought on by, by you know what I'm saying, by the, the uh, our microbiome and shit. Is that your soul? Is your soul just the bacteria in you? If my auretic shell is literally just my microbiome, basically small, 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 micro, micro, microscopic bacteria that's feeding off of my thoughts, like the bacteria in my stomach feed off of the food that I give it. And all the cravings and shit that my body be having is not based off of if, if my body is if I'm getting all the vitamins and nutrients that I'm supposed to get and all that shit and I'm having cravings and instead of third that's based off of like the bacteria that exist in my body. Now you got more bacteria in your body than you got living cells. So how much of you is fucking you? And how much of this bacteria is divine? How much of it is separated from what's separated in everybody else? Because if it, if it exists as my auretic shell, then my auretic shell exists outside of my physical being up to 8 feet, 16 feet, and all of that shit. How much of my the thread that I, that I constitute of me through the quilt of life is me? How much of that shit is you? And then I get into thinking like, is there a me? for that one y'all and we gonna get heavy y'all gonna get heavy is there a me is there a you I feel most alive when I'm in the presence of someone else who feels like in the highest dim at that time that shit is dope that shit dope as fuck witnessing somebody in their flow state like in the zone you ever see in the zone you ever go to a game where your favorite player like a nigga drop 50 on somebody or some shit like that it's an amazing thing to bear witness to even if you ain't the one dropping the 50 like there's an interconnectivity in this there's a, there's a, there's a reason I can enjoy your joy as my own I am you like only my ego be keeping me separate. Like children, before they develop one, they don't got no ego. You see how they think they are you? They think they're a part of you. They think you're supposed to be hungry because they hungry. They always want to step on your feet so they can move how you move. Throw your shoes on when you ain't around and shit. They are you. They trying on their shoes and shit. Shit's bugged out. Transfer, they getting rid of that shit. Nigga, they making niggas stand six feet apart. If I just told you your aura like eight feet, most of us is in like dilapidated, motherfucking malnourished, physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotional states. Your shit might not even go eight feet, your shit might go two feet. So if you obey in social distancing and stand six feet away, you might not even be able to absorb the game that you need to absorb from somebody. And I ain't even talking about the game when I'm telling you this sort of shit. I'm talking about like just being next to a motherfucker, breathing the air of a motherfucker. Y'all know that shit real. You can't tell me that shit ain't real. Some motherfuckers' air is worth more than other motherfuckers' air. The force is stronger. It's more concentrated than some. Man, you ever sit around your grandma sometimes, nigga? Just be like, woo. Goddamn, woman. You all old and frail and physically weak. But you so motherfucking powerful. The air around you is just charged. Just sit in a room with you. Pump me up. That shit juice me up. Set me on fire. I be ready to go do something. Word. I hug my grandma and feel like I can knock you the fuck out. There ain't no coincidence in that shit. You heard? For real. It's the air. It's the force. It's, it's like, it's something special to be able to breathe that air, man. It's a reason. And then when you can't do it no more, look how you be feeling like, nigga, like you lost something, like you lost a part of you. Because we are everybody, man. We are each other. If you relate, we related. I don't be just saying that shit because that shit a clever slogan I thought of in prison. Nah, nigga, that shit is real. If we can connect it, we can 
bomb. I think like it's a lot of that. Like what what they say when you got kids and shit, and they get chicken pox. What they tell them to do? Yo, go out, go and go and go to school still. Type shit. Let everybody get it. when you when you ain't when you hear that a kid at school got chicken pox, your kid don't got the chicken pox, ain't got chicken pox yet. You still send your send your, your kid to school. Your kid ain't kissing on the other kid. They're not sexually transmitting chicken pox, motherfucker. They getting that shit from literally just breathe, being around them, breathing that shit, and they, and they become stronger. They body produce some shit. They absorb shit from other people. Women breastfeed. You giving the nutrients directly from you to the baby. Not just the nutrients, you giving your ability to fight shit. You giving your personality, you giving everything into that baby. The breastfeed and, and like squeeze, that's just the physical representation. We could see that milk. We could see that milk of life. But the breath of life, you just can't see this shit. And they want you to socially distance. They want you to stay away from a motherfucker. Come around here, bitch, you gonna get a hug. I got some shit I got to give you. God want me, God want me to get some love to you. You know how I know God want me to get some love to you? Cause I spent three fourths of my life, nigga, malnourished and, and begging and wanting and, and, and trying to get the same love. And I know if I can say it for me, I can say it of others. So I'm gonna be out here and get it. You know, most of us grew up, you know, we grew up the way we grew up. You never asked for what should be offered. Like, you ain't even supposed to be able to ask for that. I had to ask for that. But if you're around me, you ain't gonna have to ask for that. You're gonna get that DNA transfer. You're gonna get these spiritual downloads. You're gonna get this whatever. You're gonna get this aura cleanse. You're gonna lay in the motherfucking bosom of Jesus and be healed. If you're in the presence of me. You know what I mean? Unless you're wicked or some shit. Then Jesus flipping the tables over and whipping niggas and shit with the books. Now Jesus getting it in, boy. Yeah. How about that? What y'all think? I don't know. I'm on a beautiful road. On the road again. My whole life I've been on the road again. My first time taking a Greyhound by myself was in like second or third grade from Florida to Massachusetts. I've been traveling this country by myself since second grade. I think it's something to be said for a road trip. You see the world in a way that's different. It's something to be said for flying too. That shit is amazing to be able to get up that high and see the earth. And see the world, see the environment, see yourself. That's what you're looking at. All these trees is beautiful.
morning routine is. It feel like a Monday to me, even though I know it's Wednesday like a motherfucker. Back when I get back, going to get. 
get my gypsy tees. Doing them all in the boxes. Plus, if you're watching this, then you know I made some of these, and everybody in the box gets one of these. Except, except, I think I've been working on a design. So I want one, like one side of the head to be a certain shit. You know what I'm saying? I want that shit to be. Got some gypsy lucky charms we're gonna put on the side of the head. We're gonna make it a good luck thing. Everything I do, I put my heart and my soul and my energy into it in a, in a way that I, I hope it brings good luck to anybody that touches it, experiences it, embraces it in any way, shape, or form. Mind, body, and soul. Jesus shit, man. What's more gangster than trying to be Jesus, man?